The Square Ball Podcast. Well, there'll be no heroes and villains next week, unless we've got an absolute hell-bent desire to talk about the internationals, but uh, we'll do want to wrap up the goings-on over the last seven days in the football world. We are the TSB jury, that's us three, and we're here to judge uh, who is the villain of the week, who's the hero of the week. We can take some cheap shots at people if we want in the process, and we'll find out who's going to win, uh, potentially win, our uh, our TSB Plus Members Player of the Year, selected from uh, the scores out of 10 every week. Anyway, Ken Bates Villain of the Week Award first. Who are you putting forward, and why is it Steve Martin, the dickhead ref? Well, there are mm. shouts for Cooper. Yeah, I was, I was going to nominate Cooper, to be honest. Go on, then. I, I do... Um... I do enjoy how many people have nominated him and had to clarify that they don't mean Liam Cooper because um, he didn't play this week. But yeah, Cooper, as uh, Dan from Dublin says. And not Johnny Cooper. Indeed, The yes. stats person who is, he's, Johnny's coming in, we're recording that on Friday and he's, he's going to go out on Wednesday, next week over the international break. Um, and speaking of stats, we're speaking to Andrew Stats Dalton about his new book that's going out on Monday. We've done that. Continue. <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> Just plug in the shit that we've got coming up. What's he called? Jake Cooper, is that his name? Let's say yes. Yeah. Bastard but, uh, Cooper. Dan from Dublin says the fucking lurch Adam's family looking character. Go play basketball or be a tree. <laughs> uh, let kids build a house in you, you overgrown oaf. Which I think is a very sensible nomination. Hard you remember, like the tall kids at school. It was hard to be a tall kid at school, wasn't it? No, I don't know. Do you not? Know? <laughs> um, I must admit when he came over to the East Stand to take a throw and I did shout, Fuck off, you big freak. <laughs> I felt I felt a little bit guilty about Taking that. Taking you back to your school days, Rob. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a horrendous bully. <laughs> he was a big lad but you know but just no need for him was there should have been sent off started picking on the little guy like the hardest guy obviously uh, picking on Willie at the start mm-hmm. and didn't get any better from there knee and Joe Roden in the head and just been a general Millwall pest yeah Steve Martin the dickhead ref people were asking about uh, what the score would likely be and is this a, is this a season low or, or high for the refs, depending on which way you want to frame it's it. It's not the lowest, I don't think. Is it not? So an average score of 0.95 out of 10. For, I'm, I'm sure we've had lower than that. For Steve Martin. Which is some going, admittedly, but um, it was bad. Yeah. I think if we if we don't come away from that game with a win, it ends up lower. As it is, we can sort of laugh about it and be like, well, unless you're Joe Roden, you got need in the face. Yeah. In which case, you, in might the face. Be, you might be a little bit upset about it still. But, Are you um, nominating the dickhead ref then? Obviously, yeah. 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 Um, Brian says no no one is more evil than Stephen Martin probably jealous of Rodon's toughness swole doesn't equal tough Steve which is absolutely right Rodon, swole Ro, Rodon would absolutely batter him I've no yeah. doubt he's um, you you were tra- tracking down his Instagram account weren't you, the other day and he's, he's shirtless on it you were saying. yeah it won't give me a follow won't let me have, nah, a, won't won't let, have, a, look won't have his, a little look at his pecs you want to see his beach pics yeah I reckon if you just if you reach out to his, his agent He'll probably have a portfolio he can send you. Yeah, it'll be, a, it'll be a theatrical agent as well, not a sports agent. Yeah, some signed fo- signed shirtless pics that he'll yeah. send out to fans. He might, is, he might be like Neil Warnock, he might carry some that he just can can hand out to people. Which is exactly what I wanted. All yeah. that. All of the above. So, uh, yeah, I did like uh, Dan James' platform shoes, suggesting if he, was, if he was a judge at The Hague, he could put Paul Pot on trial and would send him away and make him promise that this is definitely the last genocide he will do. Dickhead. Yeah, it was not good. He, he's... His desire to let the game flow and let people and not send someone off was bizarre. I felt like he was he was almost trying to not get involved. Would you draw parallels with genocide or probably not? No, probably not as bad as that. Yeah, um, not a fan of genocide. Uh, no, against no. it. Yeah, as a rule, against as it. a rule. Yeah, yeah, even more so than Wayne Hennessy is. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but he don't know what it is. I mean, to be fair, he probably doesn't know what that means. Um, so it's it's between between Martin and Cooper. Any any features for Neil Harris in here or anything like that? Because no, nah, he, he was it the was agent of a lot of this. So. It was literally the two of them. Although, I mean, he will have been him who sent him out to play like this. Although with Cooper, you do wonder if he's got full control of himself. Mm, that was Harris's thing when he got the job again, wasn't it? It was like we need to be proper Millwall, and I think he did reference Cooper at one point, being like, "We need to go let him be Jake Cooper." If you got Jake Cooper, you got to let him be Jake Cooper. You think fucking hell. <laughs> I suppose he did do that. He um, he he doesn't seem to be that popular with Millwall fans from listening to them talk about him. They were they were sort of annoyed by his performance as well, in that he's just a big daft wrecking ball, <laughs> just goes around the pitch almost getting himself in trouble and constantly walking a tightrope, and while also not being very good at anything but 
win the ball in in the air. Like so, I don't know. They don't they don't seem majorly keen on him, which is given he, he likes random acts of violence. You thought they'd be mm. more into. He's but. he's got the the features of a boxer. If you look at him, if you do a Google image search for him, and there is one on the Millwall website where he's shaking a fist. Poof. So maybe he is. So he don't look, he sort of don't look as big on a picture, does he? I don't know. I, 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 it's not to scale. <laughs> <laughs> it's only about 400 pixels. Hang on, pixels. it's really... <laughs> oh, no, there's no bigger actually. No, about 400 closer. pixels tall there. That's tiny. <laughs> Just saying sometimes people look... You can see a you can see Peter Crouch's head until he's tall. That's mm. what I'm saying. Yeah. Not so with this guy. Um, I don't know. Hopefully we won't have to see either of these two next year if we go up because Steve Martin's not getting a Premier League game anytime soon, is he? <laughs> well, you never know. Get those flexing those pecs on TV. You know what image conscious the Premier League are. You might get a go. Make him referee it shirtless. <laughs> Could like happen. Oiled and shirtless. Like <laughs> Adama Traore. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously he tended to be shirted because it's part of the... He was tight though. He yeah. might as well not have been on. Mm. Yeah. 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 Uh, some cheap shots here then. Um, Sheffield Wednesday getting a bit of grief from uh, Dick Van Shipbitch for their pathetic performance. Uh, was it against Ipswich? They lost 6-0. Yeah. Yeah, Gareth Southgate for bringing unwanted attention to Archie Gray. He yeah. gave, gave him a name check, didn't he? Although, Southgate, um, are you going to say that because he's, oh no. he's been put in the, in the frame for the Man United job, hasn't he? Oh, uh, really? So it could, be, it could really help all of the country. I really, really hope he gets that job. Yeah. But also he's called up that scum kid from the under-21s, Ravelin Archie, is which it, he should is, have done. Is that a sign he's getting the scum job? Trying mm, to, trying to curry favour with him? Yeah. God, I hope he gets that job. He'll fail so mas so miserably there. Be great, won't it? And they're going to yeah. hate every minute of it. Yeah, and they'll hate him within about two weeks. Yeah, just an another cycle of mediocrity. Yeah, please employ him. Because the players are, are obviously good enough to carry him through enough fixtures to keep him at a certain level, but they're just stuck in that perpetual cycle of just not quite being good enough. Mm. Well, well, Alex Ferguson stalks the corridors, offering helpful advice, no doubt. Anybody else then you want to give a quick... A, a controversial shout for Farker from Ginger Paul. He acknowledges it's a cheap shot. He says, he's disappointing me and my partner by stating his cake of preference as cheesecake. That's not a proper cake. It's barely better than a trifle. Oh, steady now. Yeah, I'm a big cheesecake fan. Yeah. I think cheesecake's good. You, classic New York vanilla. It is distinct hmm. from from a cake, I will say. Yeah. It's literally called a cake, though. It is, but... But then, but but then you you get into Jaffa cake territory, and Jaffa cakes, as we know, are... Yeah. That's well, you're back to your... You're back to your um, Commercial radio chat here. Is a Jaffa cake a cake? Yeah. Text me now. What's your favourite flavour of crisps? What do you call it? What do you call it? Do you call it a bap, or a bun, or a scoffler? <laughs> do get in touch. Let us know. Right, cheesecake is a dessert made with a soft, fresh cheese. I know. What, I know what a cheesecake is. Eggs and sugar. <laughs> it may have a crust. Yeah, it's. It, yeah. It's tough. It's it's saying it's just, it's just classed it as a dessert. Yeah, but it's not. Um, it's not got flour in it, has it? Well, I suppose the biscuit base technically. Predominantly but. dessert, because you can have savoury cheesecakes, of course. Mm -hmm. But it's tough, isn't it, that? Let me see what the, di what the dictionary on the computer says. Cheesecake. I love cheesecake. I think if that. I was eating cheese... Oh, oh If sorry. I was eating cheesecake, I would specify cheesecake. I wouldn't just refer to it as cake. Yeah, true, true. Uh, a, a kind of rich, sweet tart made with cream and soft cheese on a biscuit base. A buttery biscuit base. Mm. Um, so it's been referred to as a tart... It'd be weird, though, if Farker in his post-match presser says he was off on for, what is it, coffee, your feet on the sofa and a tart. <laughs> <laughs> he just needs to specify that it's a cheesecake. Oh, sure. definition number two, a mass noun, informal, images portraying women in a manner which emphasises idealised or stereotypical sexual attractiveness, a cheesecake photo of herself wearing a silly hat and little else. Never heard that. You should do some cheesecake photos. Hmm. Next calendar. It's next year's calendar. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe that's what he means. Maybe that's what he means. Uh, but yeah. yeah. A cheap shot for Flamingo Land as well from Mal. Um, what if making Georgie crawl around on all fours gave him that hernia? Was it not? Who is it? Um, Joe Roden was on all fours, wasn't it? Uh, Georgie was too because he was being a turtle. Joe Roden was a tiger, wasn't he? Or a lion. Yes. Yeah, as as Malice said, actually, haven't seen anything in the mainstream media about it, which makes you think. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they cover well Flamingo Land. They'll, they'll have covered it up, won't they? Friends in high places. <laughs> right, that's right. Is Gir it? The giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> hey. A lot of neck on them, and so on. Uh, anything? Anybody else? Or do we want to award? It's one of those dickheads. Yeah, I mean, it's it's Martin or Cooper, isn't it? 
Who do you reckon? I oh, don't care. All right, fair. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Not bothered. Had a nice quiet week this week. <laughs> <laughs> that was the gavel. All right. Uh, you've both made good arguments. Well done. Okay, good. Cheers. Maybe let them. F- they can fight each other for it. Who actually upset me more, though? That's the question. It's the ref, really. I feel like I fall back to Bielsa's comments that he always used to say about the referees have the tools to to deal with these things. If if he just sends him off, he can't help being sent out there all fired up by Harris, can he? No, he didn't have any control over the situation, did he? Didn't know what he was doing. It's just if Steve Martin just deals with it, it's fine. Penalty, red card. He's, he was the enabler, wasn't he? You've talked yeah. me into it. Rob, any, any counter-arguments? No, much like you, I don't care. So Right, fine. Well, so it's Steve Martin, the dickhead ref, is it? Fine. Super. Um, let's move on to the Hero of the Week, the Gitano Barati Hero of the Week Award. Uh, scores that have come in for Millwall. Farker scoring very highly again. Uh, 8.53 out of 10. Players-wise, player of the match was Joe Rode on 8.24. Ampadu scoring highly. Wilf over 8. Dan James just under 8. Georgie and so on and so forth. Again, down to the subs who tended to score lowest, but nobody under six, apart from the dickhead referee, as we said, who got 0.95, uh, which means that Joe Rodon... Oh, this is this is so exciting, I can barely contain myself. Joe Rodon, 7.28 season average. Rampadu. And Ethan Ampadu, 7.25. We join the names, maybe we can give him a joint trophy. It's Ethan Rampadu. Rampadu, the, wasn't it? Sorry, Rampadu, it was Rampadu, it was yeah. Rampadu yeah. wasn't yeah. it? That was it. Um, and Archie and Cree both doing well as well Somerville dropping like a stone yeah, he has gone off the boil a bit hasn't he though recently he has a little bit but he's still still dead good he's still fine isn't he yeah. uh, actually thing. getting into the top three is nice as well yeah he's taking he's really taking shape nicely is this just everyone on the list I look down and I go oh look at them all what a great bunch of lads whereas last year I looked at it and I was like how's Brandon Aronson still fifth he's terrible what the fuck's he doing on this list but there we go um, so we'll feed that into the supercomputer and then ask you to nominate somebody each then for your Hero of the Week. For me, it's Willie Nonto. Oh, well, what a Who's turnaround. Hero? Right, okay. Just because uh, we've got some of these bugs. Oh, so you, what you mean is the mugs are back in stock. I want to sell the mugs, so I'm nominating Willie Nonto. Correct. Where are they available? Squareball.net. Yeah. Nice mugs, these. Yeah. It's his goal against Cardiff last year. Thought we'd never sell any more of those, but, you know. Correct, yeah. Redemp- Redemption arc. Dan James mugs. They'll be back soon that as well. That was quite shameless, wasn't it? All of it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, why, why am I nominating him? I scored a good goal. A good... <laughs> why am I nominating him? Really good goal. That I didn't, I didn't include it in the in propaganda because it didn't, it didn't quite come across and I was worried people are not listening on good headphones and stuff. It won't come across well, but there's um, the Millwall footage of it. I've seen if they had any of their own commentary on it um, to see if they were upset or anything, but it's just completely plain um, sound effect only commentary. But the it's really nice from a sort of ASMR point of view is that goal. You hear, you hear the dunk as it hits the net. Really nice. Super. I don't think he's had enough credit for that goal. It was bloody brilliant. It was great. Yeah, yeah. it was better than I realised as well. Yeah. Mm, I think in the ground, I, I didn't quite have the best view of it. And then when I saw it back, I thought, bloody hell. <laughs> That's one of the goals of the season. It was just like, oh, we just scored again. It stayed hit, didn't it, that mm. one? And yeah. it, it was sheer power that took it past the keeper as much as anything. And you're always, like I said, you've said, Michael, this week, kick it dead hard into the net. Correct. And he did. He did. He did. Uh, but no, he's, he's proving very useful all of a sudden, isn't he? Or Willie, having... Um, <laughs> Maybe suggested. he's proving very useful now. All of a sudden, it's old Willie. Happy wedding anniversary, go. everyone! There we go. Um, <laughs> but I mean, pre-Christmas, we were, everyone was a bit like, "Well, don't seem bothered." Every time he comes on, he doesn't do anything. Whereas now he's um, scoring, he needed to find his group. Scoring important goals, left, right, and centre. So, well done, Willie. So, is this is, is this you've fully, only got fully redeemed? Ah, uh, he still needs about twenty. I said 27. How many has he actually got now? He must be up to I eight. He's he on must, seven. He I must think. be up to like eight or something. Let me double now. check. I did look he's, at this. He's probably now. not going to get 20, is he, though? Um, at this stage, I'm going to say with eight games to go and no playoffs to think about, mm. uh, probably not. If he can uh, get another three before the end of the year, I think that's a decent return for him. That's fair. Right. Let's have a look. So, top scorer. Yeah. Somerville, 15. Dan James, 12. Piro, 11. Bamford, 7. Willie, 7. Okay. Get to 10. Get to 10, Willie. And, 10 goal redemption. And, and you've, as long as we go up. Right. Could have turned up a bit sooner. So is this a little, bit like, <laughs> a, little, a little bit like when you're trying to persuade the kids to clear the plate of food? Come on, just three more mouthfuls. Just eat the, just eat, you don't have to eat the broccoli. Just eat, eat two more carrots, yep. please. Fine. Just a few more goals, Willie, please. But no, it's good. Really, really. 
really enjoyed watching that back from lots of different angles Good. and um, to see Millwall fans upset by it as well. And his celebration was brilliantly rubbish as well. Mm. Tumbling around. Uh, who have you got, Rob? Who are you bringing to the table? Who are you putting forward? I will go for our broken hero, Georgie Rutter. Yeah. Uh, again, like I think you said on the match ball, a few times recently you watch him go, oh, I don't think he's playing that well. And then you think at the end of the game, like, oh, he's just kind of decided that game for us. Yeah, again. <laughs> Two assists. Yeah, just ridiculous. Uh, and even when he's not playing that well, it's still a lot of fun to watch. And he's been doing it all in a lot of pain by the sound mm. of things. I've never had a hernia. You only described them to me earlier and it sounds horrible to be honest and I don't think I'd be very good at football well I'm not very good at football but I'd be even worse <laughs> if I had a hernia whereas Georgie Rutter I'm really is dead sore. good so yeah, yeah I'll, I'll nominate him I'd not noticed either the um, I think it was mentioned on the match ball but I've since seen the video of him uh, the Sky bloke losing the plot with him trying to get him over for an interview uh, as yes. well and he's busy in front of the crowd just doing his own thing Yeah, and I think more of that sort of low-key disobedience to upset Sky, I think yeah. is the way forward. Yeah, I mean, you know that I, I love Georgie, so I'm always going to lean towards Georgie. Yeah, he's, he's such good fun. Yeah. Even when he's terrible, he's good if, fun. Even when he's there and he should just lay off an easy ball and he tries to turn out of three people and do a spin, I kind of love him for it. Mm-hmm. And like the, his complete failure to score goals as well. <laughs> My God, he's terrible at finishing. <laughs> it's, it's the flawed, it's the classic flawed genius, isn't it? Yeah, if he you, if you was scoring every game, it'd be boring. Yeah. What would be the fun in that? It's better. Uh, and we'd be panicking about selling him. How many has he scored um, at Ellen Road this year? I feel like it's. I feel like his goals have all been away from home. We need more Georgie celebrations at Ellen Road. I know, it's kind. Of, it's quite impressive that he keeps winning headers from corners as well. But I really wish he'd stop doing it because he's terrible. <laughs> at them. So he scored at Plymouth away in February. Have you got one prior to that? Um, it looks like the only home goal is back in November against Swansea. Which isn't enough, is it? Mm, Scott now scored at Cardiff. Yeah, I'm going to go a bit further back. Uh, scored the winner at Leicester. And I think it looks like, did he score in the first half against Swansea as well? Millwall and Ipswich, yeah. Was that when we scored just before or just after half time? I can't remember. It was just before, was it? We've scored so many goals we can't remember. Anyway, is he having here of the week? I think he is, isn't he? He's gone under the knife, suffering, yeah. suffering for our success. But but please do buy the Willie Nonsense yeah. mugs. Yeah. Well, we haven't got any Jorginho merch yet, have we? No. We need to, because it's taken time to figure out who our proper heroes are this season. I think everyone's just kind of sitting quietly and waiting to see how it all plays out, but I love him anyway. So can you do me some personal merch? Can you make that happen? Do you want, do you want me to commission a portrait of you hugging him? Of me hugging Georgie, who's hugging a horse. Fine. That's what I want. So he's our hero of the week. Well done, Georgie. And speedy recovery, please. I think that's the very important, most pertinent bit, isn't it? Um... Right then, no heroes and villains next week. So Georgie gets to keep hold of it for an extra week. That is, that's nice for him. Which is lovely. Also, on Georgie, did you see him spot himself on the telly at the rugby? Oh, no. That was very nice. He was at the Rhinos game on Friday night. Uh, and yeah, him and Melier, they noticed they were on the big screen and sort of pointed it out and were really giddy about it. And it's like, <laughs> lads, you're on telly every week. <laughs> <laughs> right then, we'll wrap it up there then. We've got, uh, what have we got coming up over the weekend? Members show. We've recorded some stuff, I know yeah. that much, because we're not here next week for the most part. Yes, um, so yes, look out for the chat with Stats Dalton on Monday. We've got Guide to Max Gradle coming out, which we're about to record. That's on Tuesday. Uh, Johnny Cooper on Wednesday as well. And then we'll be back with the the normal stuff previewing Easter with Phil towards the back end of, uh, of next week. So we'll see you in a bit. The Square Ball Podcast.